so I, I want to understand yeah. the the Anglican Episcopal thing because I still am a oh, little yeah. a little fuzzy on this. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Anglicans Good. came from England to the United States, mm-hmm. and at some point threw off the king. Just guess. Okay. All at right. Some point so you threw, said off, you the threw off the king. They so threw off guess the king. when it happened. Oh, the revolution. So they threw yeah. so the revolution. <laughs> right, right, well, that makes sense, right? Revolution, no King George. So at the revolution, they say we're not Anglican anymore. We're Episcopal. But essentially yeah, everything so else is the same. The, 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 the formation. Yeah. Came because there was a ref because there was the American revolution. The colonies right. were rebelling. Right. Um, so Anglican holy orders since since henry pretty much he king henry the eighth right he's the one who said no thanks bye bye pope he he wanted to get divorced he let him well yeah that was yeah but that was like it was everything was about power with him right yeah that was the last thing (laughs) he was angry that the that the that the pope had so much control over the clergy because there's that question of is the clergy more loyal to the state or to the in church, which they exist, right. or to the church within their state boundaries, mm-hmm. to their own hierarchy, or do they have direct allegiance to the Pope? Right. And it wasn't until papal infallibility that so much of the, it's the Pope to every single location. Right. Because before that, it was more like, here's the Pope, but you have a council, and now you have all these archbishops. Yep that have their own jurisdiction and you're loyal to there. Mm-hmm. Henry's like, okay, I'm sick of this pretty much a foreign power having so much control. The mon- so he dissolute, he took, he d- d- uh, dissolved the monasteries. Right. Um, but he didn't change the theology mm-hmm. except, and this is with Cranmer in making of bishops, there is an oath to the head, the, su- the, the supreme leader of the church on earth, who is the English monarch. Interesting. That's part of the oath of when you make a bishop. So these, Episc- these um, Anglicans saying, we can't do that. Because we don't have a monarch. We're, the, yeah, we we're, not, we're not supposed to have a monarch. Unless, unless George becomes the monarch, unless, unless George Washington right. becomes our monarch, we can't do that. So when, and, we, this- and we can't take this oath to become bishops to have a church in America. Right. Because it because we would be swearing fealty to the English king, right? And so just fought a revolution to not do that. To not do that. So Samuel Seabury, who's the so right. Seabury Seminary is the big Episcopal seminary. Mm-hmm. Um, guess where he went? I don't know. Where did he go? He pulled a William Wallace. He went to Scotland. <laughs> And said, can you make us bishops? Because the Scottish beforehand, who were right. already like, yeah, we don't no like way, them. English. Right. They did not have an oath of supremacy. No, the oath of supremacy, what am I thinking? It's Elizabeth. The Elizabethan se- settlement, Queen Elizabeth, who was uh, Henry's granddaughter, right. had the oath of supremacy. So the Scottish, Epis- the Scottish Anglicans did not... Did not adopt that elizabethan settlement and the elizabethan right. settlement was to try to calm everybody's feathers in the church of england when there was fighting between the puritans who are more, who are calvinists right. between the more lutheran types and between the kind of kind of high church they're crypto papists mm-hmm. whatever so so now you have samuel seabury mm-hmm. he got so in um the apostolic succession in this in this tradition in, must include laying out of hands and having a direct line of bishops all the way back. That's interesting. It's also the teaching. It's also the practice of the sacraments. Okay. But you need a physical right. laying on of hands and you have to have three bishops to make a bishop. Hmm. Because you can't just have something pop up out of nowhere. Right. Right. Which is. I can. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so he needed to go and to be made a bishop. Right. And then after he did that and kind of started his parish system, mm-hmm. he also had um, a few of his other clergy, his other priests also go to Scotland to be made bishops so that then they could themselves make bishops make in America. Bishops. Right. Okay. Again, you only have 13 colonies, so right. you only need like a couple of them. Right. Exactly. 
So that grows up. Okay. And that stays pretty. So the, the prayer book, the book of common prayer. Yep. That American Anglicans and Episcopalians use is heavily Scottish. The liturgy, the, uh, the communion, especially the communion rite. Right. It's heavily Scottish. Um, so the 1928 prayer book is the King James and the still in Elizabethan English. Okay. That's the first, the 1928 was the first American prayer book. Wow. It took so everything, one? right? Crazy. On, if you, the Church of England, yeah. their official prayer book is still 1559. Wow. There's, there's the 1662 but by and large, it's fifteen. Yeah, it's 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 still got it's mainly fifteen fifty nine. So, still now, right? Right. So, you have the Episcopal Church kind of just flowing and going pretty solidly. You do have some breakoffs. You know, the Methodists came mm -hmm. from the Church of England. Um, the the uh, um, African Methodists also is a breakoff because for a while they weren't. They. Um, there's a lot of segregation issues in American church history and all of our traditions. It's in disgusting. every tradition. Yeah. I mean, that's why we have Southern Baptists and American Baptists. <laughs> um, so that, that flows. And then you have the... Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. So you have some small branches, but everything is pretty solid up until the 70s with questions of um, like women's ordination. Okay. As well as with a new prayer book that okay. is adopted into modern American English. So the Anglicans that come out of the 70s are against women's ordination? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so okay, so so yeah. let me let me understand this, okay? Mm -hmm. Do the Anglicans in America mm -hmm. swear fealty to Queen Elizabeth? No. Okay. No, there is like, no, that there is no if, orth of supremacy okay, so in that, America. I was going to say, that seemed yeah. weird if they yeah. they were like, we're leaving you because you're ordaining women, and now the head of our church is a woman. Like, right, ex <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. She still is. She's, Queen she's, of England is still technically head of the Church of England. England. But, but American Anglins don't have that connection. And, it's, no. and it's, the distinction is, is more about ordination of women in the 70s for the, for the 70s okay yeah so, right early. and then the other bigger split in the early 2000s um this guy named gene robinson who's the first openly gay bishop okay and that and so the episcopals split then about the homosexual stuff right so you get other people who called them also called themselves anglicans that right. came out of that right and then they were still having kind of so and i know and i know we have this also where right. do do we have are we allowing are Seventh Day Baptists allowing women to speak in the pulpit? Right. So your, poli your polity is such that you could kind of let it go for a while, or the ways you could fudge it. That also happened in the Episcopal Church, where right. these things kind of come up, and then yeah. there was an actual explosion. <laughs> right. I mean, as a denomination, we've ordained women since the '60s. I think even before okay. that. So, as a denomination, I'd, I'd have to check back with Nick Kirsten in my history yeah. class that I took forever ago. But it was, it was definitely we we as a denomination have ordained women. That doesn't mean that the individual churches follow that because of the right. the of polity of our denomination, my denomination now, at, of you know where it's where it's in the churches agree to be part of the conference and therefore the conference doesn't, you know, individual liberty of the churches and stuff like that. So, yeah, right. Exactly. Right. So that's, or ways you could say, well, this is my special guest who's a woman who's going to speak from the pulpit. <laughs> well, I, exactly. She's I mean, not they're, technically they're, the pastor and she's not giving a sermon. She is a special guest. She's, she's, a, giving a she's our guest speaker that happens to yep. be on a Sabbath morning at the time yep. when you normally have a sermon. Yep. I've totally seen that done. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've totally seen that done. And, yep. and, and, and to be fair, usually it's, it's someone who wouldn't want to be called a pastor and wouldn't want to be thought of as sure. speaking a sermon. So, but sure. it's still like, it's still an interesting thing. You're still day. like performing the function at that moment, right?